Hello and welcome to this, the third edition um, in a series around postural management. My name is Richard Harvey and I'm the clinical training manager for Jenks and for Giraffe. So just a quick overview of why we put this web series together. Um, we're really looking to offer some, um, some learning for people that are involved in the care of people with complex disabilities. Um, and this is really around the importance of 24 hour postural management. So we've already taken a quick look um, at an introduction to postural management. Um, we've looked at some of the anatomy and the biomechanics of the body and how that relates to posture. So we are also gonna take a look at um, how we build a, a stable posture, um, and that's in seating, lying, and standing. We, today we're gonna take a look into what can happen from um, adopting poor postures and the secondary complications around that. And we're also going to take a look at some of the fundamentals of assessing for posture. So just a little bit about me. Um, I've got around eight years experience working in the NHS and that's in a variety of different settings. Um, I've got quite a lot of experience assessing pe people's postures as well, especially those with complex disabilities. And that's led to recommending equipment provisions in seating, standing, sleeping, bathroom and mobility. Um, and I've also got a post, uh, sorry, a postgraduate um, certificate in postural management for people with complex disabilities. Today's presentation is on secondary complications. Now we've taken a look already at an introduction to postural management, so we have an understanding of why we might need to manage someone's posture over a 24 hour period. We've taken a look at how gravity and other forces can impact our posture and, and what that means to our um, alignment. We've also taken a look at the um, body itself and uh, the anatomy of our skeletal system and the different body, body segments and how they can relate to one another. So today we're really going to take a look at the knock-on effects of adopting a poor posture over a long period of time. Some of the key learning that I hope you get out of today, uh, we're going to take a look at soft tissues, so that's our muscles, our ligaments, our tendons, and we're going to take a look at how they can adapt over time um, if we are immobile. We're also going to take a look at the formation of contractures and the differences between that tissue adaptation versus a contracture and what that means in postural management. We'll take a look at the, any damage that can occur to our tissue, so any tears, any fractures and the relationship our body has with pressure. We'll also have a look at how um, adopting poor positions and poor postures can lead to uh, an increased risk of infections. And throughout the whole presentation, we're going to keep the idea of pain and discomfort in our, in our minds just to question whether or not we are managing that as best as we could. Now, when we think of um, what a secondary complication is in terms of um, postural management, um, a secondary complication is really it's a, a, a physical problem or an issue that can occur as a direct result of somebody's disability. So if a person is not able to move or change their position, um, a lot of things can happen. So a lot, there's a lot of negative impact that can happen, uh, whether that's uh, pressure related, if it is um, an infection, or the formation of contractures. So really it's a, it's a physical problem that can occur as a, um, as, a, as a direct result of that person's disability. So let's take a look at some of the problems that are associated with secondary complications. Um, first of all, uh, it can increase the suffering of people um, with, with disabilities. And obviously anybody that's involved in the care of someone with disabilities is looking to reduce that as much as possible. Um, it can have a really negative impact on the quality of someone's life. Um, such as the loss of function and independence for someone. So for example, um, if somebody does form contractures at the knees and the hips um, and they're not able to be in a standing position where previously they have been able to do that, uh, obviously that limits their, the amount of function that that, that person has. Um, we spoke previously around um, muscle plasticity and the fact that somebody with um, neuro, uh, neuro, sorry, neurological problems, um, they don't always have the ability to regain um, that damage that occurs. So it can really be irrever um, irreversible, uh, that damage that does occur, which can lead to uh, more discomfort and more pain, which obviously we look to um, minimise as much as possible. 
Uh, and also one of the other things is um, our bones as well. So osteoporosis is the kind of the breakdown of the, the bone mineral density within, it, within our bones, which can weaken and cause fractures uh, into our, our bones, which again can lead to pain and discomfort. So if we just remind ourselves of the, the three main aims of postural management, so function being, uh, being one, so being as independent as possible, to minimise damage as the second, and to reduce that energy expen expenditure and fatigue as the third. So if we um, unfortunately can, um, contract quite a few secondary complications, it can really um, limit our function. Um, it can also increase the amount of damage um, that occurs to the body. Um, which means that we may have to adopt more asymmetrical positions, which may tire us in holding certain postures. So really the, the impact on, of secondary complications can be um, quite debilitating for people with disabilities. Now if we just take a look as well at this flow chart that's below on the slide, because it's a really good representation of the possibilities that can happen and how it, how it can lead um, to, to these secondary complications. So in the top uh, left hand side here we've got the words Im immobility, um, imbalance and instability. Uh, and that leads off to a couple of different things. So on, on the right hand side, that big box, we've got a list of kind of secondary complications that can occur. And at the bottom, we've got that um, idea of an unequal loading. So if we've got, um, lo if we're loading differently throughout our body in different positions, this can lead to increased pressure, which will, which can then also lead to pressure related injuries and um, pressure sores, um, which can also, um, create more uh, more of a bed bound um, uh, situation for a person uh, and uh, on, on kind of the flip side a bed bound position can also increase the likelihood of uh, gaining pressure sores so it's a bit of a vicious cycle um, and then becoming bed bound is obviously going to decrease the quality of our life um, it's also going to increase the cost um, to the health providers so with additional surgeries or diff uh, additional care costs that may uh, may come into in, into play there. So now if we move on to tissue adaptation and contractures, um, and we're going to take a look at the differences between the two um, and why it's so important um, to know the differences when we are looking to manage someone's posture. Um, so first of all, tissue adaptation. The way that I like to think of it, um, you have a slide in front of you with some basically silly putty that has uh, been over an object and you can see how it is adapted and we've formed the shape of that object. Um, our body is much the same as that so if, if I stayed in this seated position over a long period of time all my soft tissues would just mould around the chair um, if, I, if I didn't move, if I didn't adjust my position um, and distribute uh, the weight um, through different parts of my body. Uh, if we take, for example, um, someone that's broken a limb, so on the previous slide we had a, a, a guy in a cast there, um, if someone's broken their ankle or maybe snapped their Achilles tendon, we have to fix, um, fix that limb in, in a position where it's not going to be able to move. Now over time, we had a, a look in the previous presentation that we, there's a lot of things can happen to our tissue, so that atrophy or the breakdown of the muscle where it becomes um, weaker but also becomes less in mass. The same thing happens with our, um, our kind of tendons and muscles and our ligaments, so if we're fixed in a position over a period of time, um, they can become tighter. Um, and they can also lose the range of motion as well and uh, not able to get that full um, kind of joint range of movement that, that, that is natural. Now that can happen really, really quickly. So if we think of different situations where that might happen, so in a hospital setting if somebody's had a uh, kind of a terrible um, traumatic injury um, and has ended up being kind of bed bound over a period of time, You'll find that um, it's really important for uh, people, like the therapists that are in that, um, that ward environment that they'll go around doing a lot of passive stretches to make sure that that tissue doesn't um, form a contracture. So the, the idea of tissue adaptation is, is really where the tissues become quite tight, but they're still able to achieve that full range of motion. Um, but those, the, those ligaments are becoming firmer, they're, they're, they're not a, it's not able to move as freely. So some of the other the issues around that is it's more prevalent in um, the elderly as well. So um, that's because generally 
the more the older we get the less mobile we do get so the the risk does increase for that people that have broken the limbs obviously uh, we've discussed that so the the range of um, range of motion there is limited for a certain amount of time um, anybody that is becomes immobile um, and is not able to adjust their own position it's going to lead to more um, likelihood that tissue adaptation is going to set in and we've also kind of thought about those people with neurological conditions again that if it gets to a certain point that that, that muscle plasticity isn't going to re regain itself and move back into that elasticity now the formation of a contracture what's different between adaptation and contracture um, so a contracture is where the, the, the joint is now constrained so it's not able to move throughout the full range of motion that it should be able to and that's because those soft tissues have adapted and fused to a point where they're not able to reach that full, um, full range of motion. So that's really what we're trying to avoid once tissue adaptation is set in, we're trying to avoid um, those contractures being uh, being formed and that can happen um, throughout a lot of different ways and a lot of different interventions such as splinting passive stretching um, adapted um, adapted equipment as well so standing frames things like that so if we take a look at some of the problems that can occur from forming a contracture and what what those issues are obviously first of all we've got those those soft tissues that become fixed again so we can't get that full range of motion and that can in itself lead to um, pain and discomfort um, we've spoke about the the fact that uh, people with complex and severe neurological conditions the the plasticity of their muscles if if they reach that point of no return they're not able to regain um, regain that plasticity uh, also if we take for example um, somebody that's in adopted a lying position where the legs are in a, a windswept position or falling over to one side and over time that can in itself create contractures and fix um, if we then look to put that person into a seat or in a seating position in a seated position it's going to be harder to get that nice wide base of support that we look for in seating um, that's not to say that we can't accommodate for those asymmetries um, but because we can um, but there are a lot of things that we need to consider with that so the choice of equipment um, and what's available to that person um, will be kind of greatly diminished as well so so this will obviously impact on our function we've spoke before um, about being in that standing position how we look for a nice aligned extended position in all of our um, all of our kind of lower limbs uh, if we're in a quite a severe um, knee flexed position how that's going to impact um, our standing position so it's going to be creating more pressure and more more weight going through the knees rather than the full body and going through um, kind of the hips as we like to uh, in a standing position and that really will impact the reasons why someone might might want to be in a standing position as well um, and whether it's uh, it's actually conducive for that that person's health and again, this can lead to um, pain and discomfort uh, in, in all, all the, all the um, issues that I've kind of mentioned um, above. And being in those un, um, kind of unbalanced positions as well can create different loading in different parts of the body, which can then increase the, the issues around pressure, which we'll go on to talk about uh, in a second. So this is just a bit of a, a flow chart just to really depict for you the, uh, the difference between tissue adaptation and contractures. So somebody that um, adopts a, a certain position for over a prolonged period of time, so a poor position, over time that tissue may adapt um, and become tighter and um, start to become more uh, or more, it's more difficult to move through that range of motion. After that, a contracture can form um, which would then create a fixed position uh, so that person wouldn't be able to go through that full range of motion which could then lead to uh, a deformity. Now if we take a look at um, tissue damage so there's uh, a few different things that can happen to our tissue we can we can develop tears in our tissue, um, fractures, pressure we've looked at osteoporosis already or discussed what that is which is the the breakdown of um, the minerals within our bone to make them weaker um, which can lead to fractures and also there's uh, things to consider around moisture and friction so really if 
um, somebody that has areas of the body that are quite wet, so that could be through sweating or maybe personal care and not um, being uh, in a being very dry. The um, process of rubbing um, that area over uh, a period of time against the surface can create different wounds as well. So we're not really going to focus in too much around uh, moisture and friction. So I just wanted to mention what I meant by that. Um, now, if we take a look at tears and how this can happen in the body and, and why this may happen, um, a tear to the skin is really where force is applied to the skin and the force is, is too great and it causes a break in the skin. So this can happen in a, um, a number of different ways. So first of all, this can occur through what we call shear force. So for example, um, this can happen quite frequently in, uh, in a seated position. So somebody that's sat on, on the surface of a chair and if their body weight is moving forward and the, the surface area itself is staying where it is, that can cause um, what's called shear force and uh, can cause a tear in the skin. Um, another reason that this may occur um, is through manual handling. So, so um, a carer, for example, that's um, um, doing personal care on, on a person with disabilities, um, through just moving a person, their skin may be quite thin. Uh, and which can cause uh, cause tears through the the pressure of of, of a um, a carer's hand. Obviously, people with with more complex disabilities or who might be um, uh, a bit older, our um, skin becomes starts to become more thin, uh, which means that you're at more of a risk of of things like tears. Also, if tissue adaptation has started to set in as well, our soft tissues become weaker, so it's easier for them to tear. Um, and this can obviously lead to things like infection um, and open sores where bacteria and other pathogens can enter the, into the bloodstream. And again, this can itself lead to a lot of pain and discomfort in somebody with disabilities. So um, being very mindful of someone's skin is, is really important. Fractures, this is a, another issue that can occur, with especially people with complex disabilities. The, the risk is much higher um, of, of um, incurring fractures. And this is because the amount of time that they are spending in a, a weight-bearing position is, is often um, a lot less. So the way that our bo bones get stronger is adopting in a, more of an upright load-bearing position. And through kind of our gait and our walking, we develop stronger bones. Um, people that aren't able to do this obviously aren't able to gain as, uh, as much strength in their bones, um, which can obviously um, um, lead to, to fractures in our, in our bones. Also, people with neurological conditions, they may, inf uh, may affect their balance and their stability, which will increase their risk of falling as well. Um, and those falls can obviously result in fractures. Um, also, through through that lack of um, standing, um, the the minerals in our bones that don't um, we, we, they, well, our bones become more um, demineralized, um, which means that they're more susceptible for for fractures. Which again um, is not very comfortable. If you've ever fractured um, a bone, you'll know that it's it can be quite painful um, and cause a lot of discomfort. And then, if you think of the amount of time that it may take someone to recover from that damage. Um, it may also lead to a loss in someone's function. So if someone is um, beginning to look at standing um, or walking and they've made progress in that, that motor, motor skill, if they then suffer a fracture, it's obviously gonna set them back in their motor development. Um, and some of this damage can also, can also be irreversible as well, like we've mentioned in previous slides. Now, if we take a moment to talk about pressure, um, Pressure itself and pressure care could be its uh, its own presentation, really. There is so much to cover. So really, we're just going to take a brief overview of what pressure is and how it relates to somebody that is very mobile. So um, throughout our body, we've got different bonius points as well, so sharper bits of our skeleton. Um, and if we're in, a, in, a, in one position over a period of time and we've got gravity bearing down on us, the weight of our skeleton um, can start to actually pierce through our soft tissues from the inside. And that's really what a, a pressure-related injury or a pressure sore is, is our, is our skeleton basically trying to leave the body. Um, so if we don't manage someone's position and change it quite often, the buildup of pressure can increase and those, um, those issues can kind of uh, occur and those, those injuries can occur. 
usually the um, oh sorry the p pressure um, related injuries now um, or pressure sores uh, they're usually graded from one to four uh, and that's depicted by how much of the soft tissues have been affected by that um, by that pressure how how far the the skeleton has been managed to kind of break through uh, the different layers of our skin as you can see in this slide here I decided not to put up any kind of images of um, pressure, um, pressure related injuries as, as they are quite graphic and I think we'll probably do another presentation around pressure where if you are interested in that we can, we can look in that a little bit further. So now if we take a look into infections, so our, hu um, our, our body systems, we have many different body systems, our circulatory system, our respiratory system, our uh, digestive system, um, each one of them can develop infections and they can um, be directly impacted by our posture. Now if we take a look at the respiratory system, so our breathing and how our posture can affect that. So if we think of being in a bit more of a, a slouch position and our chest cavity is not as wide, so the lungs aren't able to function as well, um, we're at more of a, a risk of developing infections. And that's because um, somebody that's immobile or with um, severe or complex disabilities, if they're adopting that position over time, there might be a buildup of what's called secretions or, or fluid on the lungs. Um, now, if me or you um, had that fluid and we wanted to get rid of it, um, we'd have a natural kind of cough reflex to be able to do that to clear our, clear our, um, our lungs. However, a lot of people with uh, complex disabilities aren't able to do that and require quite a lot of suctioning sometimes. Now, if, um, if you're not able to clear those, those secretions, um, it can lead to also a buildup of bacteria, which can then lead to an infection which in itself um, can create more discomfort and more pain, uh, but also it's the knock-on effect of being able to recover from that, um, um, that infection and how that impacts someone's function, uh, their independence, and, um, and what kind of the long-lasting damage might be from, from gaining that infection um, to being able to be fully recovered. There's also risks of um, aspiration as well, so if somebody um, is taking in fluid but it kind of accidentally goes down uh, the, the windpipe um, the again the risk of infection of those fluids being kind of trapped in the lungs there um, also increases now it's known that being in a position where the shoulders are nice and kind of retracted back and the, the chest is nice and opened up um, they kind of um, yield better kind of results in reducing infections but not everybody is able to um, get into those positions so managing someone's posture with respiratory issues is, is quite difficult and those are the things that we need to, to really consider. So the urinary tract as well and our kind of um, our bowel system is something to think of. Um, so generally people that are not mobile and not active they tend to have weaker um, bodily systems anyway. So somebody with uh, a weaker bladder um, isn't able to expel urine in, in as efficiently as somebody that has got quite a, um, a, a normally functioning bladder. So that build up again of urine and the bacteria that's in, um, in our bodily waste can build up over time and lead to infections. Also it's a, um, um, a positional thing as well so if we think of um, how our bowels work as well and being in an upright position um, gravity can help to take effect um, in, in expelling those, uh, those bodily fluids and uh, waste materials as well. So if we're not in conducive p positions to do that again those um, waste materials can build up in the body and, and lead to infections. Also people with um, quite complex disabilities, they're more likely to be um, frequently catheterised um, and having kind of a, um, a foreign object inserted into the urinary tract can lead to also infections itself. Also certain, um, certain conditions uh, that affect our muscles and especially the, the sphincter muscles that allow um, urine to pass through the body can be effective and that again leads to a build up of waste materials which can lead to infections. And all of this also can um, um, only uh, cause more discomfort and pain as well. So by, by not managing someone's posture and allowing that, um, uh, that waste material to flow through the body can also um, lead to more, more discomfort. 
But then also the recovery time as well when, in, when we think of any infection and how that can lead to the uh, increased likelihood of someone becoming less mobile um, is, is something to consider here. So again, if we take that example of somebody that's being able to get up into a standing position or a walking, um, walking position, then having to wait until um, you are fully recovered and have the strength to do that may set you back on your motor, skill, uh, motor skills goals as well. Um, one other thing to kind of um, consider as well in terms of any infection would be the ability to communicate the pain and discomfort. So um, a lot of people with um, complex disabilities aren't able to verbally communicate their pain and discomfort. Um, so it's something to bear in mind um, throughout kind of any of the secondary complications really is how that person can, um, can inform you or communicate their pain and discomfort. Now if we just take a look at everything we've learned today, just to summarise, so we've taken a look into what secondary complications are and how have adopting a poor posture over time um, can lead to those secondary complications and therefore a robust postural management regime is, is needed to really negate those um, secondary complications from happening. We've taken a look at tissue adaptation, so the, the stiffening of, um, of tissues opposed to a contracture, which is the, a fixed formed um, uh, constraint of a joint. And so the implications of that within a 24 hour postural management plan would be that if the tissue adaptation has started, then what we need to do is very different to if the contracture has already formed. So if someone's tissue has started to adapt, but we've got that full range of motion, then it's really important that we, we look to maintain that full range of motion. Now, we can't do that with contracture, so what we're looking to do there is actually stop anything from getting worse. So we need to um, manage that, so we need to um, accommodate for any contractures, but we need to correct any tissue adaptation. Um, and we also need to consider pain and discomfort when we do that as well. So we've looked at also pressure related injuries and how they can form. We'll probably look a little bit further into that in another um, presentation. Uh, we've looked into tears and how they can happen and, and fractures and the implications of, of what can happen after those um, injuries have happened. And we've also um, talked about the recovery time um, being a bit longer usually for somebody with disabilities than a kind of a normal healthy person. We've also taken a look at the different in, um, infections that can, can occur from adopting a prolonged poor posture um, and how that has a knock-on effect to our general health as well. So the next presentation that we're going to take a look at, now that we've had a, a look at what can kind of go wrong and what we, we want to avoid, we're going to look at how we can build stable postures. So we're going to take a look at seating, we're going to take a look at standing, and we're going to take a look at lying. And we're going to take uh, into consideration the different things we need to consider when we build stable postures for each of them. So again, thank you very much for listening. I, uh, I really appreciate you uh, lasting this long in my presentation and I hope that I have not bored you to tears and that you, you are uh, you're getting something from these presentations so I look forward to doing the next one